Today we're continuing problem 2-29 where the end goal is to prepare a trial balance. So what we've done is we've journalized these transactions and scrolling back up, we've got all these transactions in our journal. So remember the journal or all transactions are first entered in the journal. Now, if your boss comes to you and says, this is awesome, but how much cash do we have? You don't know because notice the journal does not have the balances in it. It just has all the transactions. If you wanted to find the cash balance, you'd have to find every single cash transaction. And like I said in the previous video, if this company has been existing for 20 years, do you really want to go through 20 years worth just to find how much cash we got? No. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these individual transactions and post like we'll take this $68,000 debit and post it to the cash account as a debit. And then from there, we can figure out what the cash balance is. <clears throat> so requirement two, post the journal entries to the T account. So here's our T accounts. Here's a T account for cash, AR, et cetera. So these T accounts together represent the ledger. And don't forget to use the transaction dates as posting references in the ledger accounts. Label the balance for each account BAL, which stands for balance. So we will post to the accounts one transaction at a time. Begin by posting the events from the first. So there's two ways to find the data to post the ledgers. You can scroll up and here is the data here but scrolling up and down is kind of a pain. So the authors were nice to you and they gave you, if you click on this link here, it shows you the transaction in one nice little spot. Now the only problem with this is if this problem is on a test, they are not gonna give you this link because this link shows you the solution. So on the test, you will have to scroll up and then scroll back down. All right, so the proper way to post is you take the debit first and you post it. So I can just double click here, copy, and then notice this is a debit for cash. So I'm gonna find the cash account. Here's the debits, paste it here or type it in there and it's July 1st. So now we've posted this $68,000. Now we've got this other $68,000 for capital on the right side. So we have to find our capital account. Here it is. So this is our credit. And that was on July 1st. So double check, do we have a debit? Here's our debit right here. And here is our credit. Now, here's what I recommend. Before you check your answer, I recommend closing this window. If you don't close the window, after you check your answer, um, the screen scrolls up and then you gotta scroll back down. So now I can check my answer. Fantastic. All right, now it takes us to the second transaction, July 5th. Now notice if you wanted to see the previous transaction, it's right up here, but we're done with that. We don't need that anymore. So we're gonna stay down here. Also, another thing you should realize is the order of these accounts. So the cat, the assets, cash, AR, office supplies, are listed here, they're listed first. And then after the assets, we've got our liabilities. We got two payables, we got unearned revenue, which is a liability, and we got another payable. And then we've got our equity accounts, which are usually considered capital and then withdrawals. And then after that, we've got our revenue account and then all the expenses. So the reason that's a good idea to know which order these are in is if you're looking for an expense, don't start at the top. You know the expenses are at the end over here, like rent expense. All right. So let's review this transaction. July 5th, we've got $500, $550 debit to rent expense. So here's rent expense, and that's for July 5th. And we've got cash, 550 credit on July 5th. 
close the window. Make sure you got a debit and a credit. Okay, now you're gonna probably find out that this posting process, remember posting just means going, f taking the uh, data from this journal entry. Remember, this is the journal entry. Posting this data from here to the ledgers or copying it is called posting. The posting process is pretty tedious. So fortunately, when you are using computerized accounting, which is going to be the case in the real world, you are going to be entering the journal entry and then the computer posts for you. So as soon as you would enter this journal transaction and hit save, the computer will post it for you. So we've got a $17,000 debit to land. Here's our assets over here. So scroll down, here's land. And it's on July 9th. And then we've got $17,000 credit for cash. July 9th. Close this and then check your answer. And then it scrolls us down to the next transaction. We've got office supplies, $1,800 on the left side, the debit, and that's on July 10th. Then we've got $1,800 AP. AP is up here. Let me move this out of the way. We got AP on July 10th. So make sure you have a debit and a credit. Oops. See, now I forgot to close this window first. So when I click OK and then close it, it's going to scroll us back up, which was what we don't want. So scroll back down and it takes us to the new entry. July 19th. So we have a $24,000 debit to cash. And we, you know, we got to have to put in the date, July 19th. And then we've got notes payable, 24,000 credit, July 19th. Now, if your boss asked you how much cash do we have at this point, you would have to take this T account Remember, the pluses are on the left, so you add these up, and the minuses are on the right. So you add up 68,000 plus 24,000, subtract 550, subtract 17,000, and that would be your current balance as of July 19th. Our next transaction, July 22nd, we have AP decreasing. Remember, AP decreases on the left side. And that is July 22nd. And then we've got cash decreasing on the right side. July 22nd, we got a debit, we got a credit, so we're good to go. Oops, I forgot to close the window, so we gotta scroll back down. Close that window first. We got July 28th, advertising expense. So we know expenses are at the bottom of the list. So let's scroll down to the bottom. Here's advertising expense. And that's July 28th, advertising payable, credit. Where's advertising payable? Here it is. July 28th, we have a debit and we have a credit. Oops, I forgot to close that window again. So I gotta scroll back down. Our next transaction, we got July 31st, we got $6,000 cash on the left side, the debit. We've got $5,500 debit for AR, accounts receivable. And then we got $11,500 service revenue. Service revenue is probably right here. So we have two debits that equal this credit, so we're good to go. Close this window. Yeah, I remembered. 
And then we've got another transaction on the 31st. So we've got salaries, expenses, 2000, copy, paste, July 31st, rent expense on the left side, July 31st, we've got $550 utilities expense. That must be down here. It's my pacemaker, needs a new battery. And then we've got 3550 cash on the right side. Cash is up here. July 31st. Close this window. Check our answer. We got another transaction. Cash is being debited 1260 on July 31st. And we've got unearned revenue increasing on the right side, July 31st. Close the window. And we've got our last transaction Yarwood withdrawals. $7,400, that'll be under capital. Here's capital, so here's withdrawals underneath it. We've got 7,400 on the left side, and then we've got cash, 7,400 on the right side. Close this window, check our answer. Awesome. Now, so here's our cash account. Notice we've got lots of transactions in it. So now it's the end of the month. We've posted all the data to our cash account and your boss asks us, or the boss asks you, how much cash do we have? So we have to total these up. So here's how we do it. You have to know which side is the plus side for all these accounts. And cash, remember, the plus side because it's an asset, the plus side is the left. So these are pluses and these are minuses. So we're going to add all these up and we're going to subtract all these. And then we're going to put the balance on the larger side. So obviously this side is much larger than this side. So the balance is going to go over here. So when we add these up and subtract all these, we're going to put the balance here of 69,000. 060. So $69,060. And this is our balance. So we put the BAL here. So when we look at this number, we will know that this is a balance and not just another transaction. So we're going to work our way down here. Some Most of these other balances are pretty easy. 5,500 AR. We've got balance $1,800 of office supplies. That's a lot of staples. $17,000 of land. What kind of land can you buy for only $17,000? Maybe it's a square foot on Manhattan. So let's go back up here to AP. AP, we've got $1,800 on this side and $1,700 on this side. So how do we calculate the balance? Remember, AP is a liability. So the pluses, so these are pluses and these are minuses. So we take 1800 minus 1700 gives us a $100 balance. The balance always goes on the bigger side. 290 of advertising payable. 1260 of under in revenue. We scroll down, we got $24,000. Capital 68,000. Withdrawals, 7,400. Revenues, 11,500. Thank goodness that in the real world, we're gonna use electronic or computerized accounting. And so the computer is gonna calculate these balances for us. So we got to add these two numbers up. 1550, 550 balance. 290 balance. So now, if your boss asks you how much cash do we have, 
you just go to the ledger. Remember, this is our ledger. And you say, we've got $69,060. If your boss asks us how much debt we have, you have to add $100 AP, $290 of advertising payable, $1260 under in revenue, and then $24,000 for that bank loan represented by the note payable. Most excellent. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these T account balances and we're just gonna create a trial balance. So what a trial balance is, all it is, is a list of all your accounts and their balances. And the reason we call it a trial balance is we wanna make sure that our debits equal our credits. So there's two ways to find the balance. You can scroll up here to the T accounts. Like notice here, we got 69,060, and that is for cash. So I can double click on that, copy it. Notice this cash balance is on the left side. Cash. Paste it here. So you can scroll up and down, which is what you'll have to do if this is on the test, or you can click here, which shows you the balances, which is a little easier. Can we double click on these? Yes, we can. So the proper order for the trial balance, and one thing is my accounting lab does not enforce the order of the accounts but we should try to put them in the realistic order, which is assets first, and then our liabilities, and then our two equity accounts, capital, and then our withdrawals, and then revenues and expenses. So basically, the T, this is, remember, this is the ledger. The ledger is set up in the correct order. So we've got $5,500 AR on the left side, We've got $1,800 of office supplies on the left. Scroll down, we've got $17,000 of land. Scroll back up, we've got, now notice these liabilities are on the opposite side. We've got $100 as a credit. And that's what, accounts payable. We got 290 of advertising payable. We got 1260 of under and revenue, another liability. We've got $24,000 of notes payable. Notice those liabilities are all on the right side, which is their normal balance. Capital 68,000. We've got withdrawals, 7,400. So I need to scroll down here. Okay, I'm done with withdrawals, so I'll go back up here. We've got, now notice this revenue is on the right side, so don't screw up and put it on the wrong side. Service revenue. And then we've got salaries expense. So all our expenses are listed next. We've got rent expense, 1550 on the left. We got 550 utilities expense. And then last but not least, we got advertising expense, 290 on the left. So now I can close this. And then what I have to do is I have to add up all of our debits, add up this column, put the total here. When I add those up, I get 105,150. And then you add these up, the credits, and hope and pray that it's the same number, 105,000, which it is, 150. 
So this trial balance is to double is a double check, is a way to double check that our debits equal our credits. And another purpose for this trial balance is the accountant can take this trial balance, since it has all the balances, and create the income statement, statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. And if you wanted to, and remember, the first income or the first financial statement is the income statement. So can we quickly see if this company has a profit or a loss? Well, remember, the income statement is revenues, which are right here. Here's our revenue, minus our expenses, which are all right here. So do we have a profit? 11,500 is definitely bigger than all these expenses. So it looks like this company does have a profit. And that's it for this problem.